I've always looked at everything that we've done from music to movies as art. You know, we, we paint pictures with our songs. And so I grew up in an era where you had to you had to paint with your lyrics. You know, the NFT space hit like a monsoon or a hurricane. And so like every other artist, I'm interested. I want to see what's going on. But the last thing I want to do is disrespect the space. Disrespect the space. Disrespect the space. Exactly one month ago, acclaimed crypto artist Trevor Jones reached out with a request that I would find impossible to turn down. Keep him calm. Sure. But what about me, Trevor? How am I supposed to do this justice? Ice Cube. Three decades of culture. No pressure. Get it wrong and risk the wrath of Cube. But there's history here. Trevor's shitting himself. I'm shitting myself. How does this end? With us all drowning in shit? No. We can't be afraid. Not a failure. Not of rubbing anyone the wrong way. Not afraid to speak up. Great art is a collision. So let's smash this together. Me, Cube, and Trevor Jones. Fuck it. See my pen is mighty on in my AK. Somewhere out there, one of you's thinking, Ice Cube, NFTs, money grab. You know you are. As the NFT space superheated itself to oblivion earlier in 2021, we saw mainstream artists launch fast, launch hot, and get burnt bad by the savagery of this rowdy world of ours. For all that, it might appear complex and inscrutable, there is one simple truth that anyone entering this space must ram into their skulls with a pickaxe, respect the culture, or suffer. Many didn't, and we haven't heard from them again. No Vaseline is a diss track. One of the most famous diss tracks of all time. Ice Cube is one of the most famous rappers of all time. An enduring and versatile OG in contemporary culture. But Straight Outta Compton came out in 2015. It served as a powerful reminder of how hard rap had had to work to be taken seriously, of the barriers Cube, Dre, and NWA showed could be broken down, and just how good the music was. Listen to NWA now, and it still sounds as fresh and raw as it did at the time. If you're Ice Cube, movie producer, basketball league founder, and musician, you don't need to do an NFT drop. You don't need the aggravation. And yet, here we are. Cube is doing one. And rather than brute force himself into the conversation on the strength of his fame, he chose to collaborate with an established artist in the space. And this is Ice Cube. He can work with whoever he wants. Like, who's going to take that call and say, no, 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 Mr. Cube, uh, I'm a bit busy. Well. Trevor Jones did get that call, and he said yes. Of course he did. Trevor's own collaborations include A Lot of Money, Jose Delbo, and Puck, the last of those being my own personal favorite crypto art collaboration ever, but Cube's list of previous collaborators is, let's be honest, frankly intimidating. Rap royalty, of course, including Dre, Snoop, Eminem, Exhibit, and even David Bowie, but his movie career has seen him work with talent at the very highest level, including one of the funniest humans ever to walk the earth, John Witherspoon. He could have picked anyone. Which begs the question, why Trevor? Well, there really is only one way to answer that question, and that's just to ask Cube himself. So that's what I did. I wanted to see like a real artist in this space. What really turned me on about Trevor, and the first thing I seen was 
uh, the Bitcoin angel. And it was his ability to me to, to take the past and merge it with the future. You know, I have a long past. It's not as long as the angel, but <laughs> I got a long past and I would want to work with somebody who, who could connect my past to the future. You know, most people would be like, hey, go make your movies, <laughs> go make your records, you know, stay out, stay out of my space. I just feel uh, grateful that he uh, was willing to work with me. Yeah, you heard that right. Cube was worried that he might piss people off by stepping into this space. Now put yourself in Trevor's shoes. How did he feel when he heard Ice Cube wanted to speak to him? It was a phone call. You know, it wasn't a Zoom. It wasn't a, a Google meetup. It wasn't any kind of like, it's like, here's a number, call me. It was very surreal to hear Cube on the other end of the, the call, this person who's been trending for, for 30 years. And he's like, you know, hey Trev, how you doing? I'm like, the, <laughs> what the? Thing is, Trevor didn't grow up listening to Cube. He was into hair metal of all things. But there was one person who was never going to let him walk away from this opportunity. I didn't grow up listening to Ice Cube. I knew more about Cube as the actor, as a, the Hollywood A-lister, you know, that, 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 that part of his life. But then, you know, fast forward to six, seven years ago when I meet my wife Violet, who's from Poland, and when she heard that Cube had been in touch to ask about a, a collaboration, she absolutely freaked out. The first time he had the conversation, I was standing behind him. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I think my jaw hit the floor. I was like, I can't fucking believe it. Oh yeah, that's Violet, Trevor's wife. And as you'll discover, she has one hell of a potty mouth on her. She's like, it's fucking Ice Cube. And I was like, you're fucking doing this. You're doing it. I don't care. You're doing it. And like, it's, it, <laughs> okay, okay. Every single person in Poland knows who Ice Cube is and was back then. Um, like basically, we were shielded from information from outside world in the 80s. So in the 90s, post-communism, when like Western um, a culture or product of that culture was coming over to Poland, we discovered Fuck the Police and, <laughs> and, and all those albums and songs. And we could learn that um, our part of the world wasn't the only one struggling. I can't believe my husband is working with Cube. With with Mr. I don't know, Mr. Cube, Mr. Ice, I don't know. <laughs> but I also referred to him. Call me Cube, man. Yeah. After the phone call with Cube, and I, I was 100% committed to it, that's when the, the fear kicked in. That's when the shit, you know, what what if this goes wrong? You know, it's easy if, if I did something with Mercedes Benz or, or Rolls Royce, whatever, it's, it's whatever, it, it doesn't matter. But this is Ice Cube. This is, like I said, you know, this is somebody who's been, you know, spearheading social change and cultural change for, for decades. And I've agreed to work with him. And now I'm shitting myself. I do this and we do it right. And and there's no cutting corners. There's no, you know, there's there's no, once we, we're in 100%, we're in 100% and we take the time to do it right. And that was how it began. Cube and Trevor Jones, a collaboration it's unlikely anyone could have predicted at the start of this year. But there they were. And now they'd started, there was a lot of work ahead to figure out how on earth to actually do it. On the face of it, Trevor Jones, a self-styled hillbilly from the tiny logging town of Lumbee, British Columbia, an Ice Cube, rap legend, movie star and basketball fan, wouldn't appear to have much in common. In fact, Trevor even told me one of the auction sites they approached for the drop turned them down because well, why would Cube work with a white artist? But as it turned out, there was a ton of overlap. Like people consider um those two artists being totally different, but they are not. After sharing their stories, they found that there are a lot of common threads, so they could both contribute to the artwork and it was representing them both. Our challenge was, what is what is the theme? Like, what are we, what are we gonna do together? What's gonna make this a true collaboration? What do we do? You know, what do we say? What can we say? You know, 
we're two very different people from two very different parts of the world. How was we gonna also show the past and the future? You know, how many layers was this piece gonna have, you know, with the augmented reality, with the AI? Um, it just was uh, just talking through what we could create together. I started talking about how I found it very fascinating using AI as a creative tool to, you know, help composition, you know, compositions with my paintings. And, and then Cube started talking about AI in a very, you know, almost like a devil's advocate. Well, you know, AI can also be used in nefarious ways. You know, how AI can be used as a, in a sense, a weapon to oppress. It can be used by establishment or, or police or or media, social media in ways. And so then that's when, when we're just talking and riffing riffing off each other. It's like, okay, now starting to get some ideas together. What can we talk about that we both have a connection with? We just click, you know, it's like, I've worked with producers, you know, big name dudes that I've never been in the studio with. And you walk in and it really don't click. You know, you can't come up with the hit. You know, you come up with a cool song, but you can't come up with the hit. And the best times I've, I've walked in the studio and the opposite happened. You click right away. It's like you, you've you been working together your whole career, your whole life, and y'all just make magic together from the jump. And that's kind of how I felt with Trevor. Just we were on the same page from the jump on what this needs to be. So I said, how about four huge portraits that all work together to tell a story? You know, a story that, that represents you, your background, your history, but then also brings in the future, you know, and the struggles that we're all dealing with right now um, with technology and, and with, you know, overload of information and, and dissemination of information. And, and, and that's when we were chatting that things started to get exciting and the ideas started to flow. When Straight Outta Compton was released in 2015, it was a phenomenon. It served as a timely reminder of the fragile social setting, police brutality, and racial profiling that ultimately erupted in the LA riots. NWA only put out two albums, but their legacy is immense. Following the murder of George Floyd, Fuck the Police became the protest song of choice for those who felt they could stay silent no longer. Cube himself cancelled an appearance on Good Morning America, and his tweets at the time were angry, inflammatory, and often condemned. 30 years on from the release of Straight Outta Compton, it was clear he still had something to say. Basically, the pen is mightier than the sword. Um, you know, that's the, you know, it's man versus machine, but when you cut down piece by piece, it's really like we got to use our brains to really get through this um, and not think about, you know, we can we can fight fire with fire. You know, we got to fight fire with brains. The concept was set. Four portraits that will be partially generated by an AI fusing key images with photographs of Cube. Trevor would then paint these using traditional oil and canvas and then create an augmented reality layer as an animation as well. One word kept coming up in the conversation with Cube and Trevor, layers. Layers of meaning, layers of imagery. They wanted it to be nuanced and multifaceted. But finding the right techniques using AI AR, imagery, animation, and video, well, that took some time. And for a drop that is deeply wedded to technology, much of the creative process unfolded in a very analog way. Cube sent the images, then Trevor created the uh, concept for the artwork. Then it, like, they talked a lot, there was a lot of exchange. Um, then he created the artwork, then Cube, uh, created the music for that art. It's, it's, it's a true collaboration. This was an ongoing process for months and months and months. And then Cube had to get the paintings to look at and to develop his own narrative around these artworks, each one. And that's when he wrote his pieces. And then he sends them back to me. And then I have to also, I'm reimagining my own work through his words. 
And that was a very interesting process that I've never dealt with in a creative way before. I knew that he would do most of the heavy lifting. And, and so I just wanted to make sure I could contribute. Um, so being able to do the music, they're not songs, they're tracks. They're, they're, they enhance the viewing of the piece. I've never done a soundtrack for a painting before, you know, and this is, this to me, you know, each painting has its own soundtrack. I had said, okay, Cube, I, I'm, I'm going to need some photographs of you. So I was expecting like, you know, a few days later, two days later, to get an email with an attachment. And about four days later, five days later, a parcel shows up in the post <laughs> with some, some merch, some Ice Cube t-shirts for me and Violet signed you know um images some signed some uh photographs of them uh a handwritten letter there's i think like 15 or 16 portraits of him really nice beautiful portraits and a handwritten letter saying please send these back they're quite important (laughs) (laughs) i wanted to get him the the original photos you know no you know bullshit (laughs) res these paintings here that i've made started with a photograph, a physical photograph sent from California to Scotland in the mail, scanned, put on my computer, put through some AI, popped out, then reimagined in, in oil paint on canvas that was stretched, you know, by me on this stretch board. You know, so all these different things, these, these processes that we went through. And that's why it took so long. There is a lot of pressure coming with NFTs. And there is a lot of, everything is very, very fast. You know, as as painters, we are on on a slow mo <laughs> compared to everything that is happening happening in NFT world. In the end, it took them nearly eight months of back and forth to arrive at the final pieces: original tracks by Cube, paintings and animations by Trevor Jones. And here they are. Don't say shit. Don't say shit. Just sit there and just take it. Don't say shit. Don't say shit. Just sit there. And just take it, says shit. Say shit. Twitter pain. Say shit. No instant. Just sit there and just his face. Say shit. Don't say shit. Don't say shit. Don't say shit. Don't say shit. Alexa. Just sit there. The bitch just catch up. I'ma speak up. I'ma speak up. I'ma speak with the help of the speak. Speak up stands out against the other portraits that sit in a cool blue or monochrome palette. This one brings the fire with an angry red. The base layer of speakers is an almost prosaic interpretation of the piece's title, but the result itself, far from it. The AI has transformed Cube into a Cubist hybrid, while the accompanying track itself harks back to a start of production from the early 2000s. There were rejected versions that are almost as compelling as the original, but this one just seems to have that fire about it. Speak Up really talks to the amount of censorship that's on the horizon that's going to keep people from challenging authority, challenging the norms, uh, challenging injustice, or just saying what they feel, you know, from the heart. And I think that's a, it's a dying breed of people who say what they feel from the heart and they're able to, to stand the heat, seeing the censorship that's happening on these you know, giant tech platforms. Um, you know, I'm saying people get their page pulled down. I'm saying people get uh, suspended. You know, Twitter, you know, they suspended the ex-president of the United States, you know, like it wasn't nothing. So just seeing this is troubling because I went through it earlier in my career with different kind of entities coming and saying that the music was this and the music was that, and they was trying to shut us down and censor us. We were able to fight through it every time. And um, I'm, I'm worried, are we able to fight through it this time? Because now we have big business in on it.
In superhero, Cube stares over his shoulder beside a parked car. Behind him, a city burns. Silhouetted figures assemble in the murk. There are guns everywhere. Cube himself carries a pistol, and he and the car are formed from endlessly repeating mutated images of Kalashnikovs. There is violence literally everywhere. You know, when you're black in America and you really face it, a lot of the, you know, you're being like socially ignored in a way, in a lot of ways, you know. The only thing that's highlighted is, is the things that's not good. And you feel like you have to take, you have to be your own law. You have to, you have to take things into your own hands in a lot of ways because you never know if you call the cops, you call the police, are you going to be treated like the victim? Are you going to be treated like the suspect? You know, I've had shit happen to me on the street and the police come and they treat me like I did it to me. You know, I'm like, yo, you know, we got a, we got a real situation. So that superhero is how you feel. You feel like you got to take things into your own hands sometimes and be willing to do that because you just never know if the people coming are friends or foe. See, my pen is mightier than my AK. And my enemies won't have a good day. Cube keeps all the original handwritten lyrics to his songs. So many of them memorialized in notebooks, all caps, neat and legible. The false starts and dead ends are raised with forceful strokes. And these lyrics become the base for Feel the Bite. We have dead homies and no Vaseline repurposed within it. And the piece is mostly monochrome. Cube stares out here, but for once the gaze is soulful, not challenging. Maybe he's saying violence isn't the answer. Maybe the pen really is mightier than the sword. We, we feel the bite, which is basically, you know, my, my pen is mightier than my AK, is just showing that you could change the world with your with, with your mouth, you know? You could change the world with your voice. Uh, picking up an AK, picking up a weapon, uh, to me is not the answer to change the world, because you, you gotta change hearts. And uh, weapons usually don't change hearts. They usually harden people's hearts. You know, I grew up rapping about using the AK and, and, and this, that, and the other, and at the end of the day, my music has gotten me further than, than an AK would have ever gotten me. And the music has changed more minds than an AK would have ever done. So that's really what, what you know, my feeling with Feel the Bite and how Trevor was able to incorporate the AKs into the piece, like, and, and actually when you see it, it's an amazing um, way where, you know, the art pops out, the guns pop out, the art pops out. It just, it's a nice dance. Well, I used to uh, write all my lyrics in a notebook and I, I had, you know, I looked up, I have 20, 30 notebooks full of rhymes and uh, I would always keep them. You know, you keep your rhymes, you don't get rid of them because you might go into one of those notebooks one day and say, oh, this is a good song. Um, so, you know, just keeping them over the years, I started to realize that I had some of some of my biggest songs still handwritten, and that nowadays, you know, that's valuable archives. So, I love keeping archives, you know, from grandkids. You know, they may need some money one day and have to <laughs> have to sell it, but but I just love, you know, doing that. I think. History is, is fun, um, you know, when you can look back and see where you've been. Who would have thought my lyrics to Dead Homies and No Vaseline, you know, which were done in 90, 91, would, uh, would find themselves into, into an art piece 30 years later, um, into a new, you know, exciting, um, space like nfts uh, so you know i'm glad i kept that stuff your homeboys hate you i'ma violate you give you that motherfucking broken bottle facial this ain't racial your new name is rachel and this one cube stares at us with that infamous cube scowl when you think of the guy 
You have that image in your head. He's always angry, confrontational, the lip curled up. Behind him, the United Artists Building and then the assembled black clad army from the cover of America's Most Wanted. Cube's face itself is a composite of AK-47s, the firearm that features so prominently in his early work, and the track itself, a cappella, raw and confrontational. Of all the pieces in the collection, this is the one that most feels like it wants to knock your fucking teeth out. And the last one is an acapella track. The track is really about the paranoia of who like you, who don't like you. Um, and, you know, it's also a, a nice battle rap in its, in its truest tradition, uh, which is acapella. You know, most... Most rhymes in the world happen a cappella. You know, most rapping in this world is done a cappella. I knew as soon as I heard that that the the words were powerful, and if it would be so easy for me to completely create some kind of cliched um, artwork animation that that took away from the significance of the words, so I had to put things on the back, you know, and let the words. And, and Cube take over there, whereas with other pieces, you listen to the, and I, I actually found that one the most difficult to, to visualize. Trevor is now viewed as one of the big blue chip artists of the crypto art movement, an OG. But here he is working with someone we can genuinely consider an OG, but he has had to fight incredibly hard to get there. We were pariahs, like he constantly had to, like it, it was tiring to explain what AR is and what um, the tags, the um, near field communication tags in his paintings. He was using a lot of technology and he was ahead of his time for years before NFTs. NFTs was like guts and um, kind of community and the platform and everything. Um, but before then, like people were looking at the back of his canvases and said, what are the chips? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like AR, it was, it was, it was like living among aliens or being an alien and living on earth. It was just lack of communication or understanding. So he was struggling with that a lot. People like different competitions or different galleries just couldn't comprehend it. It was, it was very foreign to everybody. And even people who try to understand it still couldn't. He he never lost faith. He he was persistent. He was like, I'm gonna make it. I'm I'm gonna fucking die, but I'll make it. And he did. He made it. Was there a moment when Trevor realized, you know what? Fuck, I, I did make it. I I I have done the thing I nope. was said I was gonna do. No. No. Nope. <laughs> He's still like the penny hasn't dropped yet. For both of us, we still, you know, I still use my coupons when you go shopping, you know, and my loyalty cards. And it's like, it's crazy, but no, Penny hasn't dropped. And he, he, he knows it, but it's like outside of his body. It hasn't, it, it hasn't sunk in yet. Trevor might still be struggling to come to terms with the idea that he has made it, but Cube surely has nothing to prove to anyone. But when we spoke, it was telling how humble he was. He kept saying that he doesn't want to make mistakes. Here is an artist that has conquered music and film and now basketball as well. He could have just taken some lyrics, flipped them into an NFT, just ticked that box with ease. But he seems determined to show others how it's meant to be done. I just want to make sure that I'm not, um, you know, making any major mistakes when it comes to the space. You know, I just want to respect it and respect the people that that's in it. Um, you know, I'm not as deep down the rabbit hole as I would like to be, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I will be, you know, especially after we drop these. So, you know, um, it's exciting, man. You know, it's kind of like I put out movies and I've had movie premieres and can't wait for the public to see the movie. And I feel the same way with this NFT. I can't wait for the public to get their hands on it. We both put our heart and soul into it, knowing what it needs to be. And hopefully, you know, we, we can, you know, show people what it should be. And we can be, you know, we can set the bar in some respects, you know, um, and make people 
know if they come into this space, they got to come correct. I was having these conversations with Q and he was backing me up and he was saying, there's been no pressure on me to, to speed up, to hurry up. Um, and so, yeah, I knew that this was the right decision and this was going to be amazing that we were going to do something really unique and really special, but it has been eight months of, of a huge responsibility um, that I felt, you know, because of, of who I'm working with. It's a statement. It's a creative statement. It's a peaceful statement. And I hope people will see it for what it is and that it's more than just a pretty picture or a video and, and some lyrics. It's, it's really full of meaning. And it's, it's got more layers than a fucking lasagna. We started this film in awe of Q, terrified of making a mistake, of somehow letting down culture. But every turn, he's made it clear that he was the one asking us to be allowed in as a guest. And this is Ice Cube we're talking about here. Not every artist coming in is gonna think that way. And the normies out there will probably look at a board Ape virtual band and think, what a bunch of twats. But if this collaboration demonstrates anything, it's that culture is capable of transcending all boundaries. We might have gotten really good at telling ourselves that transforming money was how we're gonna get our crypto message or NFT message across, but it's increasingly looking like it's gonna be pop culture that gets us over the line. And humans who dare to speak up, like Cube, still doing it 30 years on from Fuck the Police. These are the storytellers we need to get us there. The ones with the fire to remain defiant. You know, you only define when you don't agree with what's going on. And to me, that's the only way to be if you don't agree is to stand up for yourself and try to change it. And so I'm gonna be like this my whole life. I don't think uh, I don't think you put a you put an expiration date on on being defiant. I ain't going nowhere. Ain't not to do it, ain't nothing to it. Gangsta rap made me do it. <laughs> That's my excuse for everything. <laughs> Add it all up, you still equal to zero. Superhero, superhero. I'm coming to arrest you, are coming to the rest. Superhero, superhero. It's a bird, it's a plane, nigga stronger than a train. That bitch Bruce Wayne better stay in his lane. Boy, I spit flame like a dragon.